Hi everyone, Ross Johnson here from OneCloudX. In this video, I'll be providing a high level overview of NetSuite's manufacturing functionality. If there's anything that you want to explore further, then please feel free to get in touch and we'd be more than happy to set up a more detailed demonstration. Here at OneCloudX, we specialise in implementing NetSuite manufacturing for businesses regardless of their complexity. This ranges from simple work orders and assemblies through to NetSuite's whip and routing functionality and on to the advanced manufacturing functionality um, for finite capacity scheduling as well as batch manufacturing. You see here that I'm currently logged into a NetSuite demo account and I'm currently in the production manager role, as you can see here in the top right hand corner. If I go over this here, you'll see a list of the different roles that are available out of the box with NetSuite Manufacturing Edition. These roles define the permissions and restrictions for users and are based on how, how other uh, manufacturing customers use NetSuite. These roles can also be used as a basis to then change the permissions and restrictions to make sure that the users in the system have only got access to the areas that they require. You see here in the production manager role, we've got our home dashboard, which is focused around all of our KPIs, searches, reminders, all related to our production um, within this demo account. With the home dashboard, these come out of the box with the user roles that come with NetSuite, but these can be easily customised and configured by end users to make sure that they've got the visibility of the information they, that they need and the format that they want. So you see here with the personalised option, we can click this here and we can add different sections to our home dashboard. But beyond that as well, we can drag and drop these sections around our dashboard to decide exactly how we want these to be configured on our screen. Now, using the global search bar up the top here, we will search for our um, demo assembly item that we've got set up for this demonstration. Just open that here. Now, this item record holds all of the information required for this assembly item. You see the fields here on the screen. These can be added or removed depending on how much detail you want to be holding on your items within NetSuite. If we scroll down here, just a couple of things to note. We have got our special work order item ticked here, which means that if we have a sales order created for this item, then that will automatically create a corresponding and linked work order for us to begin the manufacturing process for that. So ideal for a uh, made to order customers um, there as well. You see here as well in our replenishment method, we've currently got this set up as a material requirements planning. Now that means that we're going to be using NetSuite supply and demand functionality um, to trigger uh, planned work orders and make sure that we have got the necessary stock um, to keep up with that demand. Moving on to the manufacturing tab here, you see that we have got our bill of materials as well as our manufacturing routings. Now that will be applicable for customers that need to track the um, full manufacturing process um, using that WIP functionality. If we click on the bill of materials here on our demo bomb, you see here that we have two different revisions on this bill of materials. Now you'll see as well that we have got effective start and end dates, which means for version control of these revisions, we can trigger those dates. And that means that any work orders that are going to be after the 1st of January 2024 in this case are going to be using this new revision here. If we open up the revision, you can see all of the components um, that make up this revision. Now, this is a list of all of the different items that are involved in the manufacture and production of this assembly. You see here that we do have the component yield um, option. So if you want to account for any wastage during your production, then that can be done so here in the component yield section um, of the bill of materials revision. Beyond that, you'll see that we can define the quantity um, that we are expecting to use in our productions, as well as the item source, whether that be from stock or whether it be um, a phantom sub-assembly, um, which we've got here, um, or whether that's purchase order. So if we don't hold stock of those components and we want to trigger a purchase order from the work order, um, then of course we can do that with our item source functionality there as well. Coming back to the um, item record, if we go on to our manufacturing routings in this tab here, this is where we can hold the information of the different routings that we've got set up um, for this assembly item. 
If we open this up here, you see that we've got the step by step sequence here for the different operations that are involved in the assembly of this item, as well as the related manufacturing work centre um, for that operation. Beyond that, you see as well that we've got manufacturing cost templates. Now, manufacturing cost templates allow us to set up default uh, costs, both for fixed rates and run rates for labour, as well as any machine resources that are required for that operational step, meaning that we can get that full visibility of the cost involved in our manufacturing of that product. Now, if we use our recent records here, just to open up a couple of work orders to go through that functionality. You see here that I'm using NetSuite's browser functionality to open these in a separate tab. Um, we're currently in a Chrome browser here accessing NetSuite. So you see here that we've opened up our work order 89. Now this has got all of the information required for um, the work order to assemble this demo assemble item that we've gone through the, the record for there. You see here that we have got um, the link back to the original transaction that created this. So uh, once again, using that back to back sales order work order functionality, when this sales order was entered into the system, NetSuite automatically generated the work order um, to fulfill that sales order. If we scroll down here, you'll see that we've got a list of all of those components that are involved in the assemblies, as well as a link to any purchase orders that have been triggered from this work order based once again on that item source. So any items that are um, sourced from purchase order, the generation of the work order will trigger those purchase orders and you'll have that full traceability on the work order record of those POs as well. To show a different example of a work order here, you see that we have another one which is set up to use NetSuite's WIP functionality. So much like the previous work order there, we've still got the list of all of the components, that traceability of the purchase orders that are associated to those components. But beyond that, with the WIP functionality, we have got our manufacturing routing here, which has been um, selected for this work order. Beyond that as well, you'll see that we have got some additional tabs here. So we've got our operations tab, which once again takes the information from those routings and breaks down the different operation sequences that are required. You see as well that we have got a start date and expected end date based on all of the effort that's required for these different steps in that manufacturing process. You see here that our production start and end date can be driven um, from these fields here, and we can use either forward or backward scheduling, depending on your preference for scheduling those work orders. If we come here to the plan time, you see as well that we've also got that detailed breakdown of the time that's planned across um, these different operational steps um, based once again on the manufacturing routing that we've got set up on the item record. Now to compare the two transactions again, you'll see that this one here, since it's not using the WIP functionality, then it's a simple one stage process of creating the build. Since we've got um, the WIP functionality ticked here for this work order, then we've got a couple of additional steps, those being the issuance of components and then the entering of completion before we can build um, this work order. So if in the case that it's just the um, non-WIP, work order, then we would just create the build here by clicking the button. And this allows us to record all of the um, components that we've used as part of this assembly. You see here as well that we can also enter some inventory details. So if you um, require serial numbers or batch tracking, then that information can be entered here. Now you see that we've got the breakdown of all of the components used. Now, once again, this is based on the bill of materials that we've got set up in the background. But if we did want to override this and increase or decrease the quantity, then we can do so as well. But from here, it's just a case of confirming the uh, components that we've used in this work order and then clicking save to save the assembly build. In the case of um, the work order here, work order 90, where we are using the WIP functionality, there's some additional steps um, before we complete the build there. Now, those steps are the issuing of components, which we can do by clicking here, which allows us to define the starting and ending operation that we want to issue components for. So we can say that we're only going to issue um, our components for our first operation in that sequence, um, sequence 10. 
And you'll see here that we have got all of the um, appropriate components to be uh, issued based on the operation that we are going to be issuing for. Now, we, just for the sake of this demonstration, I'm just going to change this to our ending operation of 40 and we're going to issue all of our components here. But once again, with that bill of material, we can set up exactly what components are going to be issued across those different operational steps. And then when we come to create this work order issue transaction, um, then next we will suggest those different components based on the starting and ending operations. You see here as well that if we are using serialised um, components, once again, we can select those here on the inventory detail tab. I'll just go ahead and save this work order issue. Now with the work order issue and the tracking of WIP, you see here that when we create this transaction, uh, that actually has a GL impact associated to it. So just to review this here, you see that we are moving all of our components from stock on hand into our WIP account so we can track that throughout that manufacturing process. So if we just go back to the original work order 90 here, you see that the uh, status has updated to in process along with us issuing this, those components. And we can see here in the related record tab any of those work order issues that have been associated with this work order. Now from here, it's then on to the next step, which would be entering the completion um, for this work order. Now the same applies, these completions can be step by step, so the different operational sequences that we've got set up for this work order. But for the sake of this demonstration, I'll just go ahead and enter the full completion. So you see here that we need to enter a quantity that we'll be building. So in this case, it's a quantity of one, at which stage we can then enter the inventory detail. Once again, if that's lot numbers or serial numbers, we can enter that information here. And you see that based on the um, bill of materials and the routings that we've got set up in the background, NetSuite has suggested the different machine setup time, labour setup time, machine run time and labour run time for uh, this work order. Now, of course, from here we can override that, we can update that with the actual um, information for this work order. But once again, for the sake of the demonstration, I'll just keep this as the default and click save. Now from there, since we have entered the work order completion for the full operational steps, that then allows us to complete the assembly and build there. So you see here back on the work order, we have now built a total of one for this item. Now from here, we can close uh, down this work order. If you're using standard costings, if there's any um, differences, if there's any variances between what your expected cost is versus what the actual cost is, then NetSuite will process those variances as part of that close function functionality there. So as mentioned, this has been a high level overview of NetSuite's manufacturing functionality, but if you do have any questions or anything that you want to review further, then please get in touch and we'd be more than happy to set up a follow up demonstration to go into more detail. Thank you. Thanks for listening.